All right, guys. Um, good evening once again. And um, from yesterday's class, you were looking at independent event. I'm just going to um, review these these um, definition and concepts, and then we will put off with um, probability, and then we'll start a new topic. All right. All right. So. Um, Based on what we were talking about yesterday, anybody want to give me their view of what we mean by an independent event? Could we start with um, Miss Miss Green? You want to start and tell me what you understand about independent events? I did not get the full concept of it yesterday. What about you, Miss Melissa? No, sir. Okay. All right. All right. So let us look at the definition. So the definition for an independent event. An independent event is one is one which has no effect upon subsequent event. Now, what subsequent event tells you? Anybody knows what it means to have subsequent events? Let's wait some. No. Miss, Miss Green, when we say subsequent events. No idea, sir. Miss Dorothy, are you hearing me? All right, so the word subsequent here really means any event that follow one event. So not, all right, so subsequent events is just the event, the events that follow. So if you start off with one event, say for instance, one event would be you roll the dice one time or the die, you roll the die one time. Now, another event would be to roll the die again. And so the second time around when you roll it would be a subsequent event to the first time. So that means that follows the first time. So subsequent event would be an event that follows a previous event. Is that clear to you guys? Yes. Right. So for independent event, it means that you're gonna have generally more than one event happening, but you'll have one event happen first, then another one that follows, right? So you, you, you throw one die now, then immediately after you throw another die. Or, and if you want to throw another die a third time, those would be subsequent events. So what the independent event is saying, um, and it, uh, an event is independent if, if you have subsequent events that follows which have no effect on the event before. So in other words, are, sorry, no effect on subsequent events. So the event before, all right, the first event does not have any effect on the one that follows. That's what it really said. All right, so let's say that the first event, we are throwing a die. So we throw the die one time and we get probably like say an ace. Then we take the die and throw it again. The outcome of the second toss or the, the second throw of the, or roll of the die, would the first throw affect the second throw? Sir, can you repeat that for me, please? I wasn't hearing. Okay, so I was saying that I'm giving an example of what we mean by independent event. And I was saying for independent event, you may have 
more than one event happening. So you have one event followed by another event, followed by another, um, another event. So I was given rolling the die as an example. So what would happen? You roll a die one time and you say you get like an ace. Then you roll a die a second time would the outcome of rolling the die a second time be affected by the first roll of the die? No, sir. Okay. Miss Green, are you in agreement with Miss Waysom? Sir, can I please go over in a two get Correct. All right. Let me see if I can put down something. So, all right. Let's say you're you're playing. You ever play Ludi? Yes, sir. You play Ludi, right? So, when you're playing Ludi, you 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 roll the die until you get a six before you can start playing, right? So I'm saying, your first roll of the die. You get an ace, which is a one, right? That's the first event. Now, the next person going to roll the die after you because you didn't get a six to one, right? So the next person will have to roll. So the, 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 the second event is the next person rolling. So I'm asking the question, will the outcome of the die be affected by the first rule, which is your rule. Will that number that come out on the die, the second rule by the next person be affected by your rule in the first in the first rule? No, sir. No, right? Because you expect that once you roll the die again, the result will just come based on what is on the die. So in that case, the second rule is not affected by the first rule. And so in events where the subsequent events are not affected by what happened before, those are the events that we refer to as independent events. Is that clear? Is that Clear to everybody? Yes, sir. Right. So when you have independent events, and uh, in the independent event, you will have more than one event happening. So let's say that you, you have a situation where you have two events which are independent, A and B. And so in the case of finding the probability of A and B together, for independent events, what we generally do is that we multiply the two probabilities. So you would find, let's say in rolling, say what would be the probability of rolling a five and a six, right? Now, the first rule, you, 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 you would have a probability of getting, let's say the first rule, let's say what's the probability of the first rule being a five? Now, how many five on the, on the die? You only have one five on the, the, um, the faces of the die. Now, how many faces that the die has in total? How many faces on a die? Six, sir. Six. And you only have a chance of getting one five out of six. So if you roll a die, the probability of getting a five in the first roll would be one out of six, right? So that would be the first event. Call that event one. Now, let's say event two now. So event one, you're rolling a five. 
and event two, you want the probability of rolling a six. So the question now, what would it be the probability of rolling a six? In event two, what would be the probability of rolling a six then? It, one out of six, just the same, sir. It would be one out of six, just the same. Because remember now, the second roll is not affected by the first roll. So the probability would have to be based on how many sixes out of the total number of faces. So you have one six out of the total. So you just one over six, same way. Now, suppose now we want to find the probability If now we are trying to calculate the probability of rolling of five, the probability of rolling of five and rolling a six. Now, what would that be? So this is a case where we're saying now, when you have a probability that you want to find the probability of one event and the key word here is and, as an, and another event, then what you should do to get the probability here is to multiply the probability of both of them. All right, so the probability of rolling a five and a six would be the probability of rolling a five, which is one out of six, times the probability of rolling a six, which is also one out of six. So multiply the two probabilities together. Multiply numerator one times one give you one, and and the denominator together six times six. Give you a what? 36, sir. 36. So you would have 36 here. So, so the probability of rolling a five and a six in terms of two independent events would be one over 36. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Is that clear to you, Miss Green? Yes, sir. Miss, Miss well, it seemed like Miss Dar Dorothy keep um, dropping off. Um, good evening, Miss Brown, and good evening. Well, just came in. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Lamar. All right, so I was just um, reviewing independent events so that um, the concept is clear in your mind. What it is that you're, you're trying to find when we're asking about finding the probability of A and B if the event of A and B are independent. And what I was explaining earlier before you guys came is that for independent events, you may have one event followed by another event and let's say you have one event um, by, fol followed by another event has to do with rolling a die. So the first roll would be one event. Now, let's say in the first roll, you want to find the probability of rolling, getting a five. What would be the probability of getting a five in the first roll, Mr. Lamar? How many faces are, are, um, are there on the die? Miss Brown, you don't play Ludi. Yes, sir. How many faces are on a die? How many numbers is, is printed on uh, the faces? Six. six, right. Now, to get a five in the first roll, what is the probability of getting a five? 
one. Yeah, it would be one out of six because you only have one five on the face of the 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 this um who are in terms of the entire six faces, only one five you have. So you would have one out of six for the first event. So the first rule, the probability of getting a five would be one out of six. Now, if you are to roll the die again, would the first roll affect what will happen when you roll a die a second time? Will that affect the outcome of the result? And let's say that the second roll, you want to find the probability of rolling a six. Will, will, will the first rule affect the outcome of what you will get in the second event? And this is for Miss Brown and Mr. Lamar because you were a little late. So I'm just trying to let you pick up from what we're doing. Can you repeat what you just said? All right, so the question is, you're rolling the die two times. The first roll is the first event. The second roll is the second event. If you roll the die the first time, what is the probability of getting a five? You would say one out of six. Now in the second roll, will the outcome be affected by the first roll? Will that have anything to do with the results that you will get the second time you roll the die? Will it affect the result? If you roll the die the first time and then roll it a second time, will that determine what number play on the die? Miss Brown or Mr. Lamar? No. What is it? What do you think, Mr. Lamar? Are you hearing me, Mr. Lamar or Mr. Lamar? Mr. Lamar, are you hearing me? Mr. Lamar? All right, so apparently Mr. Lamar is not hearing us or is busy doing something. All right, Ms. Brown, so it would not affect what we get in the second roll. And let's say that for the second roll, we want to find the probability of getting a six. What would you get, Ms. Lamar? Sorry, Ms. Brown. You said what, you said what the possibility of getting a six? On the second roll, yeah. Oh, one, one, one over six? Right, so it will still be one over six because the, the, it, it will, the, prob the, the probability of getting a six will be, would be an equiprobable event. All right, so in the first rule, we get a five, the probability will be one out of six. In the first, in the second rule of getting a six, the probability would be one out of six. So we are saying now, when we have that situation, we have what we call independent event. The ruling before does not affect what um, the outcome will be on the second rule. And that is why we call it an independent event because what happened in the second case when a rule is independent of what happened in the first case, it does not affect the outcome when you do the event again and again because the die will just, come, it will just play in accordance to what will pop up, right? So here now for independent event, when we are finding the probability for independent event. So in independent, in this independent event, we have two events that happen. The probability of rolling a five in the first event and the probability of rolling a six in the second event. So to find the probability of independent event are these two independent events, then what we have to do is to find the probability of 
rolling a five and rolling a six. And so in order to do that, what we do, we multiply the, the probabilities of each event, both probabilities from each event, we multiply them together to get the probability of rolling a five and a six. Are you following me, Miss Brown? Yes, sir. And so in that case, when we multiply one over six times one over six, multiply the numerator, we get one, multiply the denominator, we get 36. So that would give you the probability of rolling a five and a six. Now, one of the things that I want to point out, when we are dealing with independent events, you will find that we are using the word and between the events. Now, in a previous, um, when we were looking at mutually exclusive event, we used the word or. So for mutually exclusive events, we would have the word R when we are calculating the probability, but for independent event and dependent event, we are using the word and. And whenever you see the word and, it means that you are going to multiply the probabilities of the events together. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. All right. Is that clear? Let's weigh some. And Miss Green? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. So do you get the concept of an independent event clear? Is there any question you'd like to ask about independent events? All right. So if there's no question, let us just move on. All right, so this is an example. What kind of event is this? We're, we're going to read the question and then you tell me what event it is and why. A fair coin is tossed, tossed and then a card is drawn from a deck of 52 playing cards. What are the two events that happen here? What are the two events that happen in this experiment? Let's weigh some. Independent and um, subsequent. Be sir. Before, before we get to independent, just tell me what the events are. Um, playing cards. All right, so it says, a fair oh, coin is coin. Mm -hmm. and then a card is drawn. So I'm asking, mm -hmm. what are the two events that happen in here? So I mean, I understand, to be honest. <laughs> All right, the event is, is actually what, what was done. So what was done? The, a coin was tossed. The, the, the yeah, and then the, and the, then the, the card that was drawn. Right. So look at what was done in terms of the action. Coin was cut, the coin was tossed and a card was drawn. Those are the two events. So in, 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 in tossing the coin, will that event affect the event of drawing a card? Will, that, will, will tossing the coin affect what happened with the outcome on a card? No, so I don't think so. Right, because they're the one don't affect the other. And that's why we call them what? Independent events. So what I do have nothing to do with what the other thing or the other person is doing. So if I am over here and I am tossing a coin and you are over there and you're drawing cards, whatever happened with the coins that I'm, to I'm tossing, don't affect what you're doing with drawing a card. And in that case, these two events are independent. And so if we are finding the probability of the two events, tossing a coin, drawing a card, because they are independent events, what you do, you find the probability of each. And then to find the probability of 
um, one and the other, you just multiply the two probabilities. So the probability of getting ahead when you're tossing a coin would be one out of two possible outcomes. So you can either get a heads or a tail. So the probability is going to be a half in terms of getting ahead when you're tossing a coin. What in terms of drawing an ace? So if you, if, you, if you shuffle the card and pull a card from top of the pack, what would be the probability of getting an ace? Well, that would depend on how many aces you have in the card, um, the card pack. And we know that you should have what? Four aces in the card pack. And so that would be four out of how many cards in the card pack? So we have four out of how many cards in the card pack again, Miss Waysa? 52, sir. 52. And, and, and we have four E's, our aces, then we would have four over 52. Now, can we cancel that down to a simpler fraction? Yes, sir. Yes. So we see that we can divide four into itself goes one time. Four into 52 goes 13 times. 13. And so we know that the probability of drawing an ace will be one over 13. Is that clear to everybody? All right, Mr. RT. Okay, good. So what we know now, we know the probability of getting ahead would be a half. Yes, sir. So the probability of getting ahead from a single toss of coin would be a half. The probability of drawing an ace would be one over 13. So what would be the probability of getting ahead and a tail in both, sorry, ahead and, and an ace in the two events? So as I said before, we would have to multiply the two probabilities together to get the result. So in this case, we would have to multiply a half by one over 13. So the numerator is one times one. So you get back one. The denominator is two times 13. So you get 26. So the probability is one over 26. If you were to write it as a fraction, you would use your calculator, divide one by 26, you will get 0 0.038. Is that clear to 